Hello guys, welcome to the second video of my SD WAN WAN Link load balancing demo. So uh, my name is Devin Adams, <coughs> and I am a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona. And this is the second video. So y the last video, our cir circuits were delivered. Uh, we defined them in the FortiGate. We also configured the WAN Link load balancer. Uh, we did the static uh, gateway. We did the firewall policy, and we were able to ping out. So uh, let me grab that machine up here. All right. So here we go. And as you can see, we had it go down the DSL connection. Now, <coughs> why did it pick that one? Well, we picked the the WAN link load balancing. And we said just to do either or. Right, guys? It was just like, uh, I think it was, let's see here. Right? I think we just had a source IP address to destination IP address so it was just kinda going around whatever connections so <coughs> anyways well what if we wanted more control than that uh, in fact uh, how are these circuits different from one another because right now all we have is some service level agreement we don't even really know the quality of them so before we do anything because uh, remember our goal <coughs> in this video is to configure the the WAN link load balancer even further and to define some priority rules for like quality of service so let's go ahead and do that so <coughs> and this is key if you're gonna if you're gonna take the time to do all this guys you have to do a WAN status check so and what's neat is that you create one server and that is going to be applied to all of the connections that you have joined into that one logical link so I'm just going to borrow Google's <coughs> DNS here because it's pingable. It's out on the internet. And this is really good for also uh, problems that you might have that's a further away than the actual interface. Uh, that way, you know, if it fails the hell check, it can bring it out of circulation, out of the routing table, and uh, actually, you know, mark it as down. But sometimes. Um, that connection will stay up, right? Because the point to point stays up, and we're just feeding the next hop pretty much dead or congested bandwidth. So, hope that made sense. But uh, <coughs> here we go. How long are the timeouts? Are we going to restore the links coming forward, or at once they come back up? How many failures before we consider it dead? These are going to be like the hold down timers, and also are we going to update the static route? We're going to say yes, we hit OK. All right, and it's going to apply it to all of those connections. All right, so uh, let's just let that sit here and collect some packets. <coughs> so, and we'll take a we'll take a look here. All right. Ooh, look at that! Port one's not even working. That is that is different. <laughs> it should be. Um, hmm, that is interesting. I have no idea why that port one shouldn't be working so um, there you guys go now I know why I picked the DSL connection when I was first doing it I guess that port one is not functioning correctly so <coughs> let me go ahead and take a look at that real quickly let me just go to network and uh, as you can see it combined them together and ooh, looks like it lost its IP address what is up with that Oh, well, that was kind of funky. Did I pick DHCP by accident? Oh my gosh, I did. I did that on purpose just to do some troubleshooting. And you know I didn't. So um, when you're messing with the rules, by the way, it can do that. It can assume that you're getting your IP address through DHCP, which is not the case here. All right, so there we go. Oh, forgot my sub mask. My bad. Usually it's a 30, but we're going to do a 24 here. All right, there we go. <coughs> but you see how quickly I discovered that? Oh, hey, there you go. Um, yay. So now we have IP addresses, at least. Uh, <laughs> let's go back to our health check. Um, there we are. There we are. And if you notice, my cable, right, my cable connection, other than, you know, the lost packets, and that should all even out here, does have lower latency than my DSL connection. It also has better jitter than my DSL connection. And also, neat thing about T1s, right, is because they are synchronous, 
uh, they can tend to be pretty pretty smooth themselves right when it comes to latency you see how I have less latency than all of them so wouldn't it be nice that if we could treat that traffic differently based off of those rules of, of the quality and that's what we're gonna eventually do here in just a moment but before I do that real quickly I just wanted to show you guys how I'm doing this in the lab environment so GNS3 is the uh, the simulator of choice even though this is Eve right here um, that I have to do for um, my class anyways just it has to do with sharing and all that stuff but if it was just me I'd use GNS3 and I pulled these machines out of my GNS3 um, um, lab environment so uh, this is a box called NetTerm and I'm able to go into here and define the bandwidth define the latency right define dropped packets so on and so forth okay it even does symmetrical asymmetrical um, uh, qualities there so I've limited the bandwidth and I've also added latency to some of these connections alright so that is net term you can install that on your GNS3 and practice these in your own lab environment so <coughs> excuse me guys getting a little cold um, I'm thinking about sometime soon I'm gonna add a whole nother video series for adding different types of machines within your environment here if you are creating test labs for like your NSC4 just like this is a PFSense router right I can do OSPF so on and so forth uh, maybe I'll show you guys how to make your email server right to do alerts anyways just some stuff to look forward to but that was the magic of, of how I'm getting different different statistics here so all right so uh, what's also neat about this is even though it can be somewhere out on the internet a couple of hops away right uh, I am just curious there was a new DNS server that just came out right I think it was from Cloudflare or, or whoever um, I think that's who they were called Cloudflare um, but they did the 1.1.1.1 whatever I'm going to see actually how much quicker that is. Uh, just out of curiosity, they, they say that it's uh, it's a quicker connection than to the 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8 and huh? Yeah, I can I can actually see that. Okay, let's hit a little F5 here, refresh it. <coughs> okay, so I also did this to show you that you can have different statistics. Okay, for different servers. And I highly suggest you have a generic one, obviously, for internet. But if you have something that's critical, like if you're using your like Amazon uh, Web Services or an Azure Services, you can actually put a connection out there to those services to monitor the quality. I also suggest <coughs> if you have remote sites like branch offices, like uh, we'll pretend like we have one from Austin, Texas, and we're just going to ping that guy. Well, this could be one side of our VPN tunnel, right? Um, there we go. <coughs> and we can do some cool things with, with uh, quality checks to our to our branch offices site to site. So a lot of neat things there. All right, so once you have the quality there, right, no big deal. You're like probably thinking to yourself, well, that's really neat. But here's the real magic. Are you guys ready? We can actually prioritize rules here okay as you can see it is a top-down approach so in other words right now all source all destination are using the algorithm that we picked when we clicked our WAN link load balancing and said to distribute it between source and destination IP addresses across all members okay uh, so what you can do here oh this is so cool is that you can define it based off of groups of people <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, you can have like maybe your students uh, always going to, I don't know, Netflix using that DSL connection, right? And everyone else using that, that, that cable connection with the wider pipe. Uh, you can do that. Um, you can even do it through internet services. I mean, look how many different internet services there are. Maybe you want Google's DNS to always push out the DNS. Um, <coughs> um, the DSL connection 
all right? So these are just collection of IP addresses and port numbers of commonly used internet services on the internet. So this is very important when it comes to things like quality of service, right? If you're doing any kind of like VoIP trafficking, you're going to want to pick the connection that has the less latency or the less jitter. So uh, that's actually what I'm going to do here to demo. So I'm going to say uh, QOS, all right? I don't know, let's pretend like it's our VoIP traffic. <coughs> and the source, you can prioritize it. Uh, I'll just do anything from our Windows local subnet, but that might be like our VoIP phones, right? Or if we're using Skype or what have you. Um, now here's the thing. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have uh, any kind of... Um, any kind of uh, what you call it VoIP thing set up in my little test lab here so I'm gonna actually just demo this by using um, by using ping traffic just to show you which one it's gonna go through and I've created a little I'm a frail server here <laughs> or something like that which is gonna simulate uh, maybe our our VoIP traffic or something um, but this is where the magic comes in so just remember, this is going to be like our VoIP server, or I could actually say destination all, but for here. Um, and you can do protocol number zero if I wanted to, but uh, I'm going to say, I want you to use the Google DNS help check and pick the one that has the least jitter. Isn't that amazing? All right. And so what's neat about this <coughs> is even though everyone else might be going out one kind of connection, we are always going to pick the one that has the healthiest connection based off of the jitter. So let's actually try this, okay? So here we go. Uh, I'm just going to ping out google.com. All right, there we go. And if I go back to my FortiView and I go to my all sessions, all right, it looks like it picked the the bonded T1 alright that's fine okay so let's make sure that that's actually working so let's now ping something else so ping um, I don't know 4.4.2.2 alright oh my bad let's try ping uh, here we go 9.9.9.9 alright there we go just wanted to create a new session I'm going to hit refresh here. All right. And it looks like, see how that went from cable modem to bonded T1 to DSL? It's just distributing that traffic. Okay. And that's what we told it to. For every time that a source, right, changed its destination, use a different circuit. But watch what happens now when I ping that frail server of mine <laughs> that I prioritize the traffic which was 10.200.3.254 now in my lab environment guys it's just this guy right here it's just this end of the of the Linux server but I just had to simulate something there right so what's neat about this is it's always going to pick the best one that has the least jitter so it should probably be our T1 um, and there it is you see um, every single time it's gonna find the one that has the best uh, let me go back to my WAN link load balancing maybe alright so here we go health check so based off of this Google health check whatever has the less latency and I programmed it to be the bonded T1, all right? So no matter what, it's always going to pick that best connection every time. So, um, yeah, pretty neat, huh? Pretty neat. Um, let's see here, Fort of View. Go back to our all sessions. Okay, see, every time. So what happens now when a backhoe or something uh, goes into that T1 line and and hits one of the cables and and essentially 
creates a whole bunch of delay or a whole bunch of deliter, uh, uh, jitter on our in our line. So why don't we give this thing a delay of 100 milliseconds because we now have a bottleneck and also have 15% of our packets being lost because of congestion. Now this does happen, right? So um, unfortunately, you know, usually we have to get a service call about it or someone opens up a ticket or what have you. But let's go ahead and take a look at what happened with our health monitors. All right, so right away, if I go to my network and I go to my health check, we can see that there's a problem there with my T1. All right, you guys see that? Oh, oh, that's pretty bad, okay? So if we had to hard code that QoS to always use that really clean T1 line, and now it's not the cleanest line, all right? Let's see what interface it used this time. So automatically, let me go to my, my uh, FortiView, all right? And I go to my all sessions. Once it was using right the T1 because it had the cleanest jitter it's now using the DSL because it just happened to have the cleanest jitter so it automatically eliminated the T1 from being used based off of the quality of the link guys that's phenomenal okay and on top of that what if uh, you know what if the DSL and the, the T1 because that's telco technology maybe the central office blew up <laughs> anyways <laughs> and we lose those connections all together right and uh, you know and this time we, we start having massive alarms and saying that we can't you know leave the or our traffic can't leave the data center or what have you but if I hit the up arrow as you can see I'm still getting out what what's going on here right well if we come up to our health check now all right, so let me go back to my my uh, network, and let's go back to our WAN check. Even though we have two down circuits, right? The whole point of the SD WAN, the whole point of having that uh, health check, uh, is to make sure that it will fail over seamlessly, and that's exactly what happened. Now, normally you'd have an, an alert because <laughs> you want to know if your circuits have gone down but it still will keep people what working and that's what's important and now you'll be able to see all right uh, let me just hit the little refresh here all right there we go it's using the cable okay so without any kind of drop from our internal network so there you guys go so we defined the the WAN link load balancing rules we tested over failover and also QoS so hopefully that was that was helpful so um, I had someone in class last week mention that you know we really don't get to see too too much of that um, I promise you in the newer versions of the 40 OS class they have put that in uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we saw that from beginning to end here so I hope that was helpful uh, if you do have any questions guys you know how to reach out to me and uh, yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you guys next time.